Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Piece of the Pie Show. I'm your host, Pai Patel, and today I'm going to be joined by one of the team members at the Project for Decred. I am really excited, you guys. I have been looking into this project for a while now, and there is some really awesome stuff going on that the project is working on. So we're going to hear all about it. Um, so stay tuned. If you're new around here, please go ahead and consider subscribing. Like the video if you enjoy the content. And uh, Stick around. We're going to be joined here with the team member very soon. All right, everyone. So I have with me Jake here. How are you, Jake? I'm doing well. Yourself? Doing wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. So yeah, it's today... a... <laughs> oh, go ahead. It's nice. It's nice to be here. It's a you know, it's a nice afternoon. I'm uh, I'm having a good day so far. So let's uh, let's kick it off. Okay. Um, well, do you want to get us started by telling us a little bit about the project and what you do there? Sure thing. Um, so the the project in question here is uh, Decred. It's a cryptocurrency that we uh, that we put into production in February of 2016. So we've been around a while, like almost seven years. Um, we started working on it basically in spring of 2014. So that, I mean, that's far enough ago that most people who are in the crypto space now were like, well, that's a long time ago. And um, what we did is that we wanted to basically, we, you know, we saw some issues with, that, that we felt Bitcoin had would never really address. So we decided to address them ourselves. And so we made some some changes to how things worked, and and uh, you know we focus more on sovereignty and privacy, and you know and and these sorts of themes uh, than say Bitcoin. And what we and I worked on Bitcoin for several years between 2013 and 2016, and then you know it just sort of I, I feel like I sort of outgrew it. I you know I. I felt like it couldn't really accommodate more than a certain amount of, you know, innovation. So it's like you want to innovate, you got to go do it somewhere else. So what we did is we changed it so that, uh, you know, instead of it being a proof of work system, it was it was a partial proof of stake system, and then we used that for our governance. And then we've sort of built a, built upon that for the past several years. Okay, so I mean, I I know I've looked at the project on and off for a while now because uh, people have been telling me that you guys are doing great stuff there. So it's really cool to have a team member here that I can pick brains. Um, I know that recently you guys launched a new social media platform as well. Um, what was it Bison Relay? That, that's right. So we decided to, to launch a, a new, uh, you know, social media platform among, you know, and more generally just a communications platform in response to the to what I, you know, what I would characterize as crushing, uh, you know, censorship on platforms like Twitter. And, you know, I've, I've experienced less of it on, say, Facebook and, uh, you know, Instagram. I'm just not there. I'm literally only on Twitter. And so I've really firsthand seen, seen where, you know, if you take a position that is sort of uh, contrary to what's on the television or contrary to what politicians want you to, you know, want you to think, that you end up pretty much in sort of a, you know, in a filter bubble and you notice, hey, I, I, hey, I comment on these other people's posts and literally no one ever replies. And it's like, I'm not even saying crazy stuff. It's like, yeah. you know, it, you know, so you end up shadow banned, and so and so that that was really a response to this, where we tried to take what what Decred focuses on, which is you know sovereignty and privacy and you know and all that, and then manifest that in the context of social media. So what we did is we is we decided to basically approach it from the perspective of going, well, how does censorship work? Censorship works by people seeing the content that you're sending and then seeing the metadata of who you're sending it to and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the combination of the, the data payload and the metadata is how people censor you. They go like, well, you know, I, I don't know, I'm talking to Pi, they might not like that. So that gets, you know, basically somebody hit a button and go, oh, I don't like that, those communications or I'm gonna turn those off. And then the same thing goes for your content. And then, and then what this all really comes back to is a concept of custody, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who's a server operator has custody over your data. And as long as that's the case, somebody's always going to be able to hit a button and turn it off or censor it or manip or otherwise manipulate it. So what we did is we encrypted all that and then 
and then minimize the amount of metadata that's present. So that's really sort of the way we decided to answer this, this big problem of like, what do you do about uh, social media censorship is you just make it effectively impossible to censor. And then we also integrated in uh, the Decred Lightning Network because that, that actually ends up being, oddly enough, a sort of almost a prerequisite to doing this. Okay. So now if, say for example, I wanted to join, uh, what would what would I need to do? Well, what you do is you download some software, you'd run it, you'd wait a little bit for, because it does uh, it does an SPV sync of the uh, of the Decred uh, blockchain headers, and then you would it would require a small amount of Decred, like it could be 0 .1, 0 .1 or 0 .01 Decred, and just for mm -hmm. reference, it's like we're talking like a dollar or two or you know twenty cents in some cases. And then you can use those you can use uh, those uh, those coins to open a channel on the Lightning Network with Decred, and then you can use those that channel to communicate uh, with other people, and you can do so privately. So, just to give people sort of a you know something a little bit more tangible is if you're familiar with something like Signal, is it's like yeah. Signal, but you don't have to register a phone number or anything mm -hmm. like that. So you can show up out of the blue, and you know nobody really needs to know who you are, and you can have secure communications with whoever and you know, uh, effectively uncensorable social media for some trivial amount of decred. Okay, so it's mostly a um, messaging, messaging with people kind of a platform, not necessarily, you wouldn't say it's like a Twitter or anything like that, would you? Well, what we did is 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 we we tried to distill out what we thought the essence of social media was, and so the essence of social media on all of these platforms, it's there's some commonality across it, like whether it's Twitter, or Facebook, or Instagram, it's that you know you have an account and then people can follow you. You can mm -hmm. follow other people, and then you end up with basic, basically a feed, and that feed mm -hmm. shows you things that people are posting, and then the same thing happens on the other end. Is we do have that integrated. So, so despite the fact that yes, there is effectively a signal-like functionality to it for secure communications, what it boils down to is that is tightly integrated with the effectively social media component, where instead of it being mm -hmm. just for social media or just for communications, we saw it as an opportunity to just sort of fuse the two things together. Okay, so that that makes a lot of sense. Actually, it sounds really interesting. I probably will go ahead and join because it's right up my alley. I mean, really, with everything going on in this world, privacy it's so it's so huge, right? I mean, we all. Yeah, I mean, pri privacy is huge. I mean, uh, privacy is one of these things. I feel like a lot of people don't think about it, but it's like without privacy, one of the one of the major problems is people can always figure out what you're going to do next and and i think that people d don't understand exactly what the ramifications of that are if some if you can predict what somebody's always going to do you can always outmaneuver them mm -hmm. and so privacy is just i mean it's a very important thing to have so you know it's like if somebody was sitting right over your shoulder every time you were doing something most people would be like i don't like that that's yeah. like you know that's that's too much you can see everything i'm doing everything i'm gonna do and then you know like i don't i don't like how that's going but when it's digital it's it's a lot more insidious because you know people's ability to you know perceive it is much less 100 percent. yeah i mean it, it, there are so many negative ramifications to that i i don't think that we want to maybe go into all of that currently on this video but <laughs> privacy is super important and i i am like a big advocate i'm always trying to tell friends and family and anyone who will listen that it's really important to be as private as possible. I mean, especially with all these big giant corporations that are always spying. I mean, you know, you gotta call it what it is. It's really spying. More people are becoming aware of it now than we were, you know, a few years ago, but still lots of people are ignorant to it or whatever, you know, they just don't care too much to think about that. But now, so while we're on the subject of privacy, I know that I also read, um, the president in Brazil had used Decred, uh, the blockchain, to improve uh, his his campaign. What was up with that? How did they do that? Would you elaborate? Sure thing. Um, so we have a pretty strong uh, Decred community in Brazil. We have several of our developers are from Brazil. They've been with the project for several years now, um, some of them since launch. and. Um, as a result of that, we have more more traction in Brazil than we almost do in the United States. And um, the sort of thing we we ended up seeing there was um, there was a uh, uh, there was a notary there 
uh, several years ago who started using Decred and other blockchains as a means to timestamp signed documents, like digitally signed documents. Mm. And then that became kind of popular to the point where it caused a stir within the, you know, the notary community there. That is the, the notary community was literally trying to ban this guy <laughs> from from doing these digital notarizations because it was like, you know, threatening their, you know, their little their little market. Yeah. And um that then sort of rolled into two things that happened in the past two years in 2020 in the 2020 ele municipal election cycle in brazil um uh several uh what is it i want to say mayoral candidates um for major for, you know for major cities in brazil uh used decred to testify you know to publicly ratify and, and make transparent uh, donations that they had received. Apparently, that it's enough of uh, you know it's a it's a dark enough market that that doing that was was perceived as something that would add value. And so and so that was used for time stamping uh, two years ago. And then more recently in the 2022 uh, election cycle for the presidential uh, campaign, um, one of the uh, you know uh, what is it uh, Lula Lula and Haddad had issues with. Um, people claiming that their uh that their campaign policies would be would be x when they really were y and so this created a you know a crisis of confidence and and sort of an inability to to figure out well well who's claiming what and what was said when by who and and our time stamping program allows people to testify to data at a certain time and then um and then others to verify that it was testified to at that certain time you know, typically by a particular party. So in that sense, it was used to help, uh, what is it, uh, basically, it, it, you know, in a way, make their presidential campaign more sovereign over their over their published uh, policy, uh, you know, documents. Mm. I mean, I can see how that would be beneficial even here if our elections would take into account something like that. Do you oh, think yeah. That, <laughs> do you well, think that's something that would... Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that pretty much, you know, uh, politics everywhere could benefit from more, more, uh, what is it, accountability and sovereignty, right? You know, yeah, like whether it's account, wh whether it's accountability on part of politicians or it's sovereignty on part of you know people who are voting. I mean, uh, the beating heart of Decred, I mentioned it earlier, is, is that we have sort of a proof of stake system, and that's really the beating heart of Decred is is the voting system we have, and. It's a secure voting system. You literally can't fake the votes. The votes cost coins. The coins, there's only so many of them that exist. So, so this process of voting is unfa is expensive and unfakeable. And I mean, is it really so difficult to imagine that you know a similar system would be put in place for you know nation state voting? I wouldn't think so because it's it. I mean, in my opinion, this could have been done 30 years ago, but for various reasons, it hasn't been. Uh, it does make you wonder why. Yeah. And so. It, and so systems like this really, I think, could uh, could could really enhance, uh, you know, voting systems throughout the, you know, throughout the nation state or throughout, you know, various nation states. Yeah, I mean, 100 percent. It <laughs> really does make you wonder, like you said, why we are not using things like this, really blockchain and in general to secure our voting system a little bit better. Um, but anyway, topic for probably another <laughs> another day. Um, <laughs> I also noticed that um, you guys had recently released uh, a DEX. Is that a peer-to-peer -peer DEX um, that I was reading about? So, so the way our DEX works is um, there. There's a number. I mean, the DEX space I would say is pretty crowded. That's that's sort of what I what I would preface this with. But mm -hmm. I feel like basically the deck space historically has broken down into a few categories. It's either that you have a standalone DEX and there's an associated coin, which in my opinion is just rent seeking. I, I know that people who run these projects don't like to hear that. But um, if you're swapping, you know, if it's non-custodial exchange between two parties, there's no need for a coin. We literally demonstrated that with our DEX. So we released our DEX because everywhere else was like hey buy our coins so you can do these swaps and we're like you can just do these atomic swaps between chain a and chain b you don't need a chain c there's no reason for it mm -hmm. and so we we made that piece of software and yeah. so that was released in november of 2022 and we uh you know we've been running it in production for over two years now and you know it's it's rock solid. It does everything it needs to. The other thing is, is that, I mean, I feel like a lot of exchanges, there's a lot of front running that goes on. So for example, 
if I'm a if I'm a whale and I have and I'm on you know tight or a whale or a major trading corporation and I'm on good terms with an exchange, I get extremely beneficial access to that exchange. Super low latency data feeds, super low latency execution. I can run my bot on a, in a data center right next to the machine that's running the exchange, and that but that that creates a in my in my view really crappy incentives because it allows people to be you know fleeced and ripped off as a function of uh, the, the trading process and so we actually made it so that you that it's prohibitively difficult to do that we made pseudo random uh you know matching so for example there literally no one can show up and cut in front of you in line and be like oh you were going to buy this let me buy it first and sell it back mm -hmm. to you for like a penny more and do that over and over again and then you know the other problem is really what it comes down to is listing fees is you know this is something that i don't know how much people talk about it but the cost of getting listed uh the listing fees for for major cryptocurrency exchanges can be pro comically high i think would be the best way to describe it mm -hmm. where they want hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars and it's like guys I, I'm a dev, I run a dev team. I know what this. I know what this costs. You telling me it's costing you a million dollars or half a million dollars is complete. Well, uh, nonsense. I think would be the polite <laughs> way to put it. So, so it was. You know, we built it to sort of get around what we saw as a number of problems. Not to mention, we had actually experienced a few. Uh, you know, in my opinion, completely unjustified delistings at a number of exchanges. Uh, you know, on the basis of claiming that Decred was a security or something like that. So we, we've been in this situation where it was difficult to get, uh, you know, you know, new listings. So so it's sort of like, well, why, how are we going to get new listings? Oh, we can't. And then some of our existing ones were like, oh, well, we're going to delist you because of some made up, you know, made up reason. And so that was what really drove us to create the decks. And it's been, you know, it's it's been ticking along and. I feel like something that, that you know that's that's common in the con in this in the context of uh, exchanges is people always talk about volume, but as we've seen with say you know FTX and SBF and Alameda you know A Alameda Research, is volume is basically I mean you can you can literally have one you know one trader match with themselves all day and it's like oh look at all that volume and it's like that's yeah. meaningless so we do actually do our ex you know the the exchange process on chain so it's you can't really fake it okay so is there so what other features are available on your decks would you say that are not common on some of the other decks so I think I, I think I touched on one of them, or I, I, I guess I touched on a couple of them. The first one is yeah. is no re no rent seeking. You don't have to mm -hmm. buy a, to a special token. You you can you know you can trade the pairs you trade without you know you, all you need are are the you know the two assets in question or at least access to them, and then you can you know convert between them. There's no there's no games there. The only fees anyone pays are network fees in order to uh, publish the transactions that ultimately get mined. And then the, the other thing that we do that's you know that's pretty unusual was and I was I was touching on this earlier was the pseudo random uh, order matching, which is that you know on normal exchanges, it's standard practice for people to be front run by bots uh, mm -hmm. that are controlled by high frequency trading operations, and we just you know basically we've engineered that out so that that's effectively not possible anymore. Wow, I mean that that's that's pretty awesome um now for somebody who has like no idea really what decred is this is the first time they're hearing about it what are some takeaways that they can really like think about and that this is a project that they should really look at and you know possibly invest into well i would argue that the 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 takeaway about decred is that sovereignty matters and sovereignty can take many different forms um you know Early in the in the cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin pioneered uh, sovereignty over the ability to send, transmit, you know, to transmit and store value. Mm -hmm. But there's so many more dimensions to to sovereignty beyond that. For example, who's in charge of the network? How do you make changes to the network? How do you fund work that builds the network? How do you uh, how do you keep every how do you give people privacy? All, all of these are questions of sovereignty, and and you know I mean here's another one: How do you exchange your your you know your your crypto assets from one thing to another? Mm -hmm. All of these things are you know and, and and then even with Bison Relay, how do you communicate with other people in a, in a way such that it can't be easily manipulated by third parties who are operating a server? So th these questions of sovereignty really matter, and in my view 
sovereignty is really sort of the, you know, it's the sun of the crypto space. Everything revolves around it. So, so this idea that, you know, hey, you're gonna have a bunch of neat features. I mean, I like neat features and, you know, but don't get me wrong, but, but what it really comes down to is how much sovereignty do you get out of this, you know, out of this system? And I would argue that Decred is a sovereignty maximizing uh, cryptocurrency. There's a lot of features to it. And they're all built to give you know the users you know enhanced sovereignty both over both over their assets and then over the future of the network. So that's what I would argue is really the major selling point of Decred, and that and that no one else can touch in the space is that everybody else has maybe one feature or something that they're really good at, and the 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 feature set that we really maximize is sovereignty. And I, I would argue that we are unmatched in that regard. Yeah, and I would say that that is a really important feature for sure. Now, it, there is a total supply of only 21 million as well. That's right. Yeah. So every time the voting does take place, like you were saying, it's it, it is a money that it's your money, and every single time, and there's not like a 21,000 billion tokens. <laughs> it's you know 21 million. There's a limited supply of it. So that yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I feel like that's uh, for me. That's one of the things that I look for as you know, as someone who who cares a lot about sovereignty is is when it comes to issuance. That is one of the really revolutionary things about cryptocurrency is this idea of deterministic finite issuance, because that that it's so powerful. This idea that hey, there's never going to be more than X of something, mm -hmm. and here's the schedule by which it becomes available. That's a really powerful thing. And, and for me, that's sort of a constraint, you know, like I don't, I'm not really a cryptocurrency investor. I don't have this giant portfolio of stuff, but if, you know, if you, if you ask me to make a portfolio, those would pretty much, pretty much be the only assets I would put in the portfolio. Ones with a finite deterministic issuance. Yeah, I would have to agree. I mean, it's really, unless you're a trader and you don't necessarily care about the supply and you're literally just looking at the chart of something because they went down and you know it's going to go up. That's totally different. But holding on to something long term, it's got to have, you know, it's got to have a limited supply. Otherwise, what's the point? Everyone wants gold. Why do you want gold or anything of that nature for store of value? Because it's limited. You don't yep. want limited supply, limited, limited. Uh, what is it? Uh, you know, uh, what is it? Stock to flow. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want fiat that they're printing every other day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you mean? You mean U.S. dollars aren't in your investment portfolio? <laughs> I would have to say that's a negative. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to only have my bank account just so I can pay my bills. That's literally only money that stays in that bank account. Otherwise, exactly. no. It's such a, I mean, it's sad because, you know, I still hear my parents and stuff, even though I've been in crypto since 2017 and they, they're like, you need to be saving your money. I don't understand. Why do you put it into Bitcoin? Isn't that Bitcoin down now so much? You lost all your money. I'm like, let me sit down with you and explain to you what's going on with inflation. Do you know how much of your money that you're losing as is sitting in your bank account that you refuse to do anything with? But, you know, I'm still their baby. They can't really take any financial advice from me, which I'm not a financial advisor, but still. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like the problem you just described, it's totally, it's totally generic and it's very much generational in the sense that, you know, uh, I've experienced it talking to older people about cryptocurrencies as well, which is people are so conditioned, uh, you know, particularly people who are maybe, I don't know, I'm, I'm like 40 um, and, people who are 20 years older than me are so conditioned to this idea of there's a person behind a desk and they have your money that anything anything outside of that is like whoa hey what's going on here oh that sounds like a scam and it's like yep. <laughs> no uh you know hey in other contexts i might you know i might think the same but it's like you know after after seeing how bad it's gotten and you know how much how hot inflation's running it's like it's you know fiat currency is like it's just like you know ding after ding after ding it's like i can't believe that people still are on that train yeah i mean it's really really sad and even people like my parents they have heard of other people with the stock you know with the stock market crashing and stuff so they don't even believe in getting into the stocks or anything they're more which you know it's fine they're all about saving or 
investing into real estate, which is okay as well um, to invest into real estate, but you can only, they can only do so much, right? With, I mean, if you're gonna have businesses, you need people to run them. And now with the whole employee shortage, it that's becoming a really a whole nother problem for having businesses. Who's gonna run your businesses for you? No one wants to work. I don't know where all these people are going. How are they surviving? <laughs> I have no idea, but they're not. I've been, I've been wondering the same thing myself, where it's like, there are jobs and they pay decent. It's like, you know, uh, hey, get off your cell phone and uh, go get a job or something. I mean, I, hey, hey, I've worked some really crappy jobs in my day. I was a janitor over a summer in uh, high yeah. school. And I feel like that, you know, things like that teach you the value of money. You're like, man, I gotta, I gotta hustle harder. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just people not working. I don't get it. I, I don't get it either. I'm like, you can't all be like, famous on TikTok. You all like literally can't <laughs> be making money online. I don't. I don't get it. it. Government doesn't pay you that much money to survive, like not uh, not for a family. I don't think so. Unless yeah, the, the, the economy has really gone sideways. And, uh, you know, my hope is, is that in the longer term, uh, say governments will figure out the deal and go, hey, maybe maybe in, in a currency we can inflate constantly isn't a good thing because it creates really crappy incentives for everybody. I know, but sadly, only thing they're looking at is CBDCs, and they're just equally the same. I mean, worse, really, they're much worse for people than even fiat is, because they can be controlled so much easier. Well, oh, 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 you mean money that can be arbitrarily turned off by a central planning committee, just like social media? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not <laughs> scary at all. Can't see the problem with that. <laughs> yeah. That's not scary at all. It's like, oh, you don't like the idea of me voting for this person instead of this person, or you don't like me, you know, taking this jab or that jab. Oh, sorry. Uh, we think you've gone on this trip too many times. We're not going to give you any gas. You used up too much carbon for this month. Sorry, no gas for you. Like, yeah, exactly. it's scary. Like yeah, you, what is it? Your card, uh, sorry, sir, your card has been declined because of your political beliefs. Yeah, right? Can you imagine? This is, we're living in some scary times and if people don't wake up, that's the thing that really makes me more passionate to start making more videos again because I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone cannot just be sleeping through this. Like, and I'm certainly not going to be sleeping through this. Whatever voice I have, I'm like, I'm going to be speaking out against these things because people have to realize what's coming and we have to try to do something to stop it at least educating people so they don't just embrace it with open arms i think something that's on 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 the positive side of this is that uh the digital yuan in china has been going very poorly for the chinese government and yeah. And I take that as a very positive sign mm -hmm. because, you know, if, if you if there was anywhere you'd go like, well, how's it going to go? How's CBDC, you know, going to go? It's it, it's not going very well for the Chinese. And I think that, you know, when you look at societally, they have a very central, you know, much more centrally planned uh, society than, say, you know, the United States. Mm -hmm. And if it's going poorly for them, uh, I think it's going to go much worse anywhere else. So that's that's all, you know, hey, that's on the on the on the positive side. You know, hey, we'll get some rioting in the streets. People will be upset. Maybe there won't be a whole lot of food. But, you know, I think people won't just sleepwalk into CBDCs. At least that's that's my that's my hope. I would like to hope that as well. I really do, because that would be a terrible, terrible implementation of blockchain. It's one of the worst things that it could be used for, for more control. Yeah, as if as if governments don't already exert enough control over the daily lives of average people. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's a definitely something I could blabber on for a really long time because I'm really passionate about that. And that's another big reason why I am I am really passionate about Decred. And after speaking with you, it makes me even more like, OK, yeah, this is a great team. And what you're doing is a really good cause. And having that sovereignty is so important. Well, I feel like, it, you know, sovereignty aligns incentives. Sovereignty makes people make better decisions. When you're sovereign over yourself and over your assets and over your decisions, it, you make better decisions. And mm -hmm. I think that this is the this is also the thing is, you know, the, the fiat world is about not get, making people sovereign. It's about, you know, you put your money with somebody and then it's an entry in their database. And if they don't like you, they can turn off the entry or they can tell you, you know, we're get out of our bank. 
and it's just not i don't think it's any way to build a society if something's illegal you know you know legislate it make it illegal and arrest people otherwise you know like you shouldn't be you know you shouldn't be basically giving people a hard time and i feel like sovereignty is really in my view the key to making a better human society i would 100 agree with you on that i think that, i think most people would agree with you on that that uh, would sit and think about that for a little bit yeah everybody wants to be sovereign everybody wants to be in control and so i would argue hey let people be in control as long as it's not something super crazy like if sovereignty to you means going and beating your neighbor to death okay maybe that's a little bit that's not the kind of sovereignty we had in mind yeah but uh you know things like hey i want to hold assets and not have people steal them and you know i want to i want to i want to have an opinion and not have somebody censor me it's like these these things these things are all about sovereignty mm -hmm. Yes, and I am I am so thankful that you came on today and that we got to chat. This has been really beneficial and you've helped me even feel more encouraged to speak more about sovereignty and just in general about blockchain because it is it is crucial. Um, it's one of the things that we're going to need to build a better world, really. Exactly. And I mean, I feel like the world the world will be a better place when there's more sovereign individuals in it. Yes, educated, sovereign individuals, 100%. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Um, is there any other, um, anything else that we haven't talked about that you want to bring up before we let you get back to your day? Uh, nah, but um, if anybody wants to chat, we're, we're always available on uh, chat.decred.org. And uh, remember, the revolution will not be centralized. 100%. And you guys, I will go ahead and drop all those links as well in the comments down below. So don't worry. Uh, the website and what you just gave chat. And if do you have a telegram as well, do you guys I think we do, but I'm, I'm not on telegram. No problem. Whatever uh, links that I get from their team, uh, we'll drop them in the comments down below. Thank you again so much, Jake, for being on. I really appreciate it. You have an Thanks. awesome rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for having Thank me on. Thank you. Bye-bye. You guys, wow, right? Like, wow. Sovereignty. It's all about sovereignty. That's what blockchain is all about. It is all about that. Giving power back to the people. And I really hope that you guys enjoy this interview. I certainly enjoyed chatting with Jake so much. He is the founder, one of the founders of Decred, and he I mean, such a like-minded individual. I really enjoyed speaking with him. Um, if you have any other questions, if you want to see him back on or anything, drop it down in the comments below. Love to hear it. Be sure to check out those links that are going to be down there as well. Um, and again, if you're new around here, take a moment to subscribe to the channel, help my channel grow. It would really mean a lot to me and to get the word out to more people about blockchain and, and sovereignty and how it's all about giving power back to the people. So thank you again for being here, for checking out my Chai with Pie show today with Jake. I hope you learned a lot. I will see you in the next episode of Piece of the Pie, where I'll be helping you get your piece of the pie. Till next time, you guys, take care.